probably heard of Bluetooth before. Maybe you've used it in your car while listening to your favorite music, or while talking on the phone through a wireless headset. And recently, you may have come across the term Bluetooth Low Energy, or BLE for short. So is this the same Bluetooth we use for streaming audio, or is it different? This can be really confusing, but it doesn't have to be. Hi, my name is Mohamed Afani, and in this video, I'll go over the basics of BLE. We'll also talk about the differences between BLE and the Bluetooth we use for streaming audio, or what's referred to as Bluetooth Classic. Then we'll also talk about some of the applications of BLE. So what is BLE? Well, BLE is a low power wireless technology used for connecting devices with each other. And the key term here is low power. And what this means is that BLE is targeted more towards applications that need to consume less power and may need to run on batteries for longer periods of time, months or even years. BLE was introduced back in 2010 as part of the Bluetooth 4.0 spec. It is not an upgrade to the original Bluetooth, but rather it's a new technology that utilizes the Bluetooth brand, but focuses more on the Internet of Things or IoT applications where small amounts of data are transferred at lower speeds. BLE operates in the 2.4 GHz ISM band, which is the same spectrum that's used by Bluetooth Classic, the original Bluetooth, and Wi-Fi, as well as some other technologies such as Zigbee. We're more familiar with the Bluetooth that we use for streaming audio, and that kind of Bluetooth is referred to as Bluetooth Classic. Now, one important thing to note is that Bluetooth Classic is not compatible with BLE. So two devices, a BLE device, cannot communicate directly with a Bluetooth Classic device. So for example, your smartwatch cannot talk directly to your wireless headphones, but rather some devices implement both BLE and Bluetooth Classic and allow talking to these devices independently. So what are some of the applications of BLE? Well, some of the most common ones include home automation applications, such as a smart door lock, a smart appliance, or in your lighting system. Another application would be in fitness devices, such as wearables and trackers and pedometers. And one other interesting application is an indoor location technology where GPS may not be feasible. And last but not least, in medical devices and personal health devices. And now with the recent release of Bluetooth 5 and Bluetooth Mesh, BLE has more feasible applications, especially when it comes to home automation and industrial applications. In BLE, there are two kinds of devices. You have a central device and a peripheral device. The central device is usually the more capable device in terms of CPU power or memory or battery capacity, whereas the peripheral device is much more resource constrained, especially when it comes to battery. Now, BLE is an asymmetric technology, and what this means is that much of the heavy lifting and the processing responsibility is put on the central device versus on the peripheral, which actually allows the peripheral device to sleep for longer periods of time, turn off the radio, and consume less power. So it may be obvious now, but really what makes BLE so special and what are some of the benefits of using BLE? Well, there are a few major ones that I can think of. First, lower power consumption. Even when you compare it to other low power technologies, BLE is one of the lowest power consumption technologies out there. Second is the free cost to accessing the official specification documents. Some other technologies, you may have to become part of a group and pay fees to access their documents. With BLE, it's free. The third benefit that I can think of is the lower module and chipset costs. And with BLE chipsets and modules, the prices are going down very rapidly. The fourth benefit, and the, probably the most important one, is the existence of BLE in most smartphones in the market, which really gives it a huge advantage over other technologies out there. The way that BLE achieves its optimized and low power consumption is by turning off the radio as much as possible and sending small amounts of data over low transfer speeds. So, for example, applications such as video streaming or high quality audio streaming or transferring large amounts of data are not really suitable for BLE. 
but rather it's meant for transferring data from small devices such as sensors to a smartphone. So what can we expect in terms of range between two BLE devices? Well, the range typically goes up to 50 meters or 100, about 150 feet. That's line of sight. Whereas when you have obstacles and walls in between the devices, the range can go down significantly, probably to several meters or even several feet. However, when utilizing the long range feature of Bluetooth 5, the range can go up pretty significantly, even up to 800 meters line of sight. Now, what are some of the factors that can limit the range between two BLE devices? There are three of the most important factors include the surrounding environment around the BLE devices. The second one is the antenna design of the device. And the third being the orientation of the devices that are talking to each other, which really is the effect of the antenna and its orientation. Now let's talk about the speed of BLE and what can you expect in terms of speed between two BLE devices. Well, there's two important concepts to understand. There's one called the raw data rate and the other one is the application data rate. The raw data rate is simply the rate at which the radio transmits the data over the air. And it varies depending on the version of Bluetooth that you're using. So for example, if you're using Bluetooth 4.2, then the raw data rate is set at one megabits per second. However, if you're using Bluetooth 5 and later, then the raw data rate can vary and there are different options there. You can either use the one megabits per second, which is the original Bluetooth low energy data rate, or it can go up to two megabits per second when utilizing the higher speed feature of Bluetooth 5. And when you use the long range feature of Bluetooth 5, then the speed and the data rate goes down to 500 kilobits per second or even down to 125 kilobits per second. Now that's in terms of the raw data rate, but what about what you can expect in terms of your application data rate and how much data you can actually utilize at the application layer? Well, that gets reduced and that's due to the packet overhead and some gaps in between transmitting some of the packets. So what you can expect in terms of application data rate, for example, when you use the two megabits per second, you can achieve up to 1.4 megabits per second of data rate. In the upcoming videos, we'll talk about BLE in much more detail. We'll cover topics such as advertisements, connections, services and characteristics, BLE security, and Bluetooth mesh. To learn more about Elisys, provider of the world's most advanced Bluetooth analyzers, visit elisys.com. Have a need for training or consulting services? Then contact our training partner, Novelbits, at novelbits.io. I hope you've enjoyed watching this video and learned a little bit more about BLE. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.